Ardor has three main views, as well as a toolbar that can be seen in each view. Let's look at the toolbar first. Here we have Ardor's main menus. This is where you'll find a lot of useful functions like saving your session, editing Ardor's preferences, or reading the manual. There's not much we can do here with an empty session, so let's move on. This is where you'll find detailed information about your Ardor session. You can see your current sample rate, buffer size, the amount of time you can spend recording audio before your drive runs out of space, and the amount of DSP, or digital signal processing, that your computer is using. Right-clicking on this section will allow you to customize what gets shown here. This button shows you Ardor's logs, which are very handy for when you run into some issues and you need to ask for help, or just figure out what's going on. This button will change color depending on what the logs are showing. Black means there are no new messages, green means there is new information, yellow means there are new warnings, and red means there are new errors. Next up, we have the transport section. The panic button tells all your MIDI instruments to stop playing everything. This comes in handy when working with a lot of synths that can chew up a lot of processing power and forget to finish playing notes every now and then. The metronome button turns on a metronome that plays a sound every beat, perfect for when you need to stay in time while recording. The start and end buttons will take you to the start and end of your session. These won't do anything for now because our session is empty. The loop range button is grayed out for now, but when you create a loop region in your session, this button is how you activate it. The play selection button will play a specific range you select, good for auditioning clips or listening to short sections of your song without losing your place. The play button will play your session from wherever the playhead is, and the stop button will stop whatever is being played. The record button arms your session for recording, which will happen the next time you press play. This button allows you to synchronize Ardor with external applications. For example, I have used this in conjunction with Blender to work on animation and sound design at the same time. This slider allows you to fast forward or rewind through your session depending on which way you slide it. This option lets you change the default playback speed, and this option shows you how fast the slider is set. If you set a punch range in your session, these punch in and out buttons will enable that range for you so that when your session is armed for recording, it won't actually record anything until it reaches the punch range. Normally, if you record one audio track on top of an existing one, Ardor will just put the new one in front of the old one. With non-layered recording enabled, recording new audio will trim existing audio clips so they are no longer sitting underneath the new clip. Note that this doesn't delete the old audio file in any way. This feature is handy for when you want to replace some existing audio clips with a new one, but you don't want to manually delete the old clips yourself. The follow range button will cause your playhead to jump to any range you select automatically. The auto return button will cause your playhead to jump back to its initial position after you stop playback. With this button off, the playhead will stay where it is whenever you press the stop button. This section shows you the position of your playhead in minutes and seconds and bars and beats. Clicking on these two buttons allows you to change the tempo and time signature of your session. This solo button will flash red to indicate that you have at least one track in solo mode. Clicking this button will instantly turn off solo mode for all tracks, which is useful when you end up working with large session files. The audition button will flash red to indicate that audio is currently being auditioned. Clicking this button will stop whatever audio is being auditioned. The feedback indicator will flash red when it detects a problem with Ardor's signal flow that may cause a feedback loop, which can happen if you route a track through itself by mistake. Clicking this button doesn't do anything, but it's still a good indicator to have so you don't accidentally blast your ears with a feedback loop. The navigation timeline provides a compact view of your session with timestamps and regions shown. Clicking or scrolling in this area lets you navigate through your session, which comes in handy while mixing when the main timeline is hidden from view. This section shows you the main output volume of your session, and this button turns red whenever your audio peaks above maximum volume. Clicking this will reset all peak indicators throughout your session. These are four buttons you can customize to do whatever you like, from keyboard shortcuts to Lua scripts. By default, Shortcut 1 takes a wide screenshot of your entire mixer, and Shortcut 2 creates a list of every plugin currently being used in your session. These shortcuts can come in real handy when you need to document your progress for a client or an assignment. These three buttons allow you to switch between Ardor's three main views, Recorder, Editor, and Mixer. Click and drag on these buttons to open each view in a separate window. Perfect for working with more than one screen. Now let's take a look in the Editor window. Here is where you can choose your edit mode. 
Slide mode means you can move regions around freely without affecting anything else. Ripple mode means if you move or delete a region, then everything ahead of it will move back to compensate for that space. And lock means you can only use nudges to move regions, which is great if you don't want to accidentally move anything with your mouse. This list allows you to choose where your edit point will be, so if you're trimming a clip or making any menu edits, then this will decide whether those happen at the mouse pointer, the current marker selected, or your current playhead position. Grab mode allows you to click on any clip or region and move it around in your editor. Range mode allows you to select a specific range of time in your session. This smart button combines the functions of the grab and range tools. So when you're in grab mode and you have smart selected, clicking on the bottom half of a track will select it in grab mode and clicking on the top half will allow you to make a range selection. Cut mode allows you to click on any clip or region and make a split. The audition tool allows you to click on any audio region and play it. The stretch tool allows you to select any region and stretch it in or out, which is good for speeding up or slowing down audio. The draw mode allows you to draw a MIDI region and then draw notes inside that region so you can actually work with your MIDI instruments. And internal edit mode allows you to play around with the gain of individual audio regions, MIDI notes you've drawn in, and automation points, which I'll cover later. Over here we have the snap grid function. So turning this on will cause your audio regions to snap to whatever grid you have selected when you move them around, which is very handy for working with music that has a set tempo. And here we have the nudge tools, which allow you to take any selected region and nudge it left or right, depending on how much time is displayed in this red clock. So this allows you to make precise time adjustments or move around clips in lock mode. Over here we have the zoom controls for the editor. So this menu allows you to see how many tracks are in view at once. This button makes all selected tracks smaller, and this one makes them larger if you want to get a better view at what you're looking at. And then these three buttons control the horizontal zoom. So if you need to zoom in more to your current time point, then you can zoom in, or if you want to look at the entire session, you can zoom out. And finally, this list will let you choose the anchor point for your zooming. At the moment, it'll focus on the playhead, but if you want, you can make it focus on where your mouse is, or just towards the left, center, and right of your session. So in the main timeline here, you can see we have a bunch of lanes up top. If you want to show or hide any of these, you can right click in this area, and then you can choose which options you would like to see. So by default, you should have a time code ruler, a bars and beats ruler, a meter, which is where you can see any time signature changes you've made, Tempo, which not only shows you your current tempo, but also indicates any tempo changes you've made, whether they're constant or ramped. Range markers, this is where you can create ranges that you can select and identify later. Loop and punch ranges, this is where you select the range for punch recording and for looping a section. CD markers, which are there for exporting so that you can have an entire session of songs in one place and then export them all to separate tracks on a CD. And location markers, which are like range markers, but you just create one point at a time instead of creating a start and end point for a section. And underneath that, we have the master track, complete with a volume strip, a mute button, and an automation button. This little A button opens up a list for automating parameters of the master track, but I'll cover that later. If you click the mix button up here, we can take a look at the mixer view. And here you can see a bunch of lists on the left, as well as a big empty area for you to add tracks. Then you've got your master track on the right. And then of course we have the monitoring panel here. If you can't see the monitoring panel, or if you want to get rid of it, you can press Shift M, that's the keyboard shortcut that will toggle whether you can see this panel or not. We don't need it right now, so if you want to, you can go ahead and hide it now. Then finally, if you click this button up here, you can see the recorder mode. This is basically a compact view of your entire session with a list of all your current inputs down the bottom here. If you have a microphone turned on, you'll probably be able to see audio coming through it when you make noise. This is basically just a quick way to see which inputs you have and make sure that everything is currently working so that you can record and you're ready to go without any issues. Now that we've had a look at the interface, let's add some tracks.